Hey everybody, it's Terry with the Drone Cat. I want to take a few minutes today to talk about uh, what you can do with your drone if you're stuck inside. Now, like a lot of us, uh, self-quarantining, um, self-isolation going on now with the coronavirus situation, you might find yourself with some downtime. You might not be out flying your drone or, or being socially active and that kind of thing. So this is a good time to move forward with some of the things that you can do with your drone. And one of those big things is learning. Believe it or not, lots of skill and experience of flying a drone and operating a drone comes from sitting in your chair and learning about the software and the flight control. So when you do get out there on site, on set, in the field, wherever, you're set to go. You know where things are. You know the settings that you have available and things like that. So it's a good time to just even do this as a refresher now and then. Now, as I mentioned before a bunch of times, I fly an Autel Evo. I, I like the drone really well. And the software you're going to see is for the Evo. But this is very similar to what you'll find on a DJI Mavic Pro or Phantom or many other similar models. Now, you're going to find a few things different, and I'll try and point that out as I go along because the flight control software isn't always the same on every drone for every manufacturer. But Basically, the idea is about the same. There, there is kind of that foundation of, of common stuff you'll see. So anyway, taking a look at the screen here, right in the middle, you see two buttons. One says camera, one says mission. Today, we're going to be working in the camera settings, which, of course, gives us access to camera controls and flight controls. But that blue bar on the bottom is something I really wanted to point out. New firmware detected. That just popped up, and I'll be doing that after we finish the video today. It is suggested to update your firmware whenever you see this. And the reason for that is the engineers have a pretty good reason for releasing these firmware updates. Sometimes they improve battery life. Sometimes they improve uh, camera settings, flight controls. There are improvements or there's a good reason for them to issue these updates. And it keeps your aircraft and your controller up to date. Now keep in mind. You're not just doing this ambiguous firmware update. Sometimes these are specific to certain things. Sometimes you update the, the firmware, believe it or not, on the batteries individually. So keep an eye out for stuff like that. You may have to pop each battery in one at a time in the drone and let it run the update process that way. So anyway, let's go ahead and jump into the camera here. Now it opens up um, and uh, we have a little flash screen here showing us how to start the drone up which we already know how to do that. Now it's not a real exciting picture, just the top of my desk here, but um, you can see the camera view there and it's a little washed out of course because of the lighting and all. Now I'm gonna pivot the camera up and down to indicate what? The thing I always preach about, no matter what you do with your drone before you start it up, make sure that uh, that gimbal lock, that gimbal cover is removed. You don't want to burn up those gimbal motors. Now again, to do this, you might hear the fan on my drone sitting here next to me. It's running. It has to be started up and running to connect, obviously, so we can go through these uh, procedures. Obviously not going to start the motors up, but as a safety precaution, before you start your drone up indoors, always, 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 Remove the props. Take the propellers off. Just in case, you never know. You might accidentally hit those two sticks down into the middle and, and get those motors spinning. You don't want that. You don't want to create a, a, a safety situation or an emergency situation indoors. It's easy. It takes a few seconds to spin those props off. And that way, if you do accidentally uh, engage the motors, um, it's not going to take off. So anyway, now we're up and running. Now, right along the top bar here, it gives us some essential information. Um, where we're um, indoors now, we're under manual flight mode. Not worried about that, but kind of toward the middle, you'll see 23.94 or 49. Um, that's um, our flight time remaining on the battery. Really important thing to keep an eye on. The next jump over to the right, see an arrow pointing upward zero feet, that's the speed that the drone would be moving. So we're not climbing in altitude. If we were climbing, that would give the rate of climb in miles per hour. Um, the uh, next one over the arrow pointing to the right, same thing, how fast the drone would be moving forward. But I want to get over to that little gear wheel at the, the top right corner. 
tap on that. That takes us into our flight control settings. This is something that unfortunately gets overlooked. I've, I've talked to a lot of people about this and it's a good practice every time you fly. When you go out, just take, even if you have these things set up, lots of times a firmware update is going to reset these back to factory defaults. So you want to go in here and make sure any of your custom settings are still there or need to be reapplied. So it's worth just, again, taking 30 seconds to go through here, check to make sure your settings are the way they should be, or any changes you might want to make, you can make right here now. I'm not going to go through all these because there are so many. Some are self-explanatory. But things like novice mode, if you're new to flying, this isn't a bad thing. This limits how far the drone can fly, how high it can fly, how fast it can fly. So it helps keep you out of trouble that way. The go home altitude or the return to home altitude. Why is that important? There's kind of this tendency to think, well, in an emergency, I don't want the drone to fly out of sight or do anything out of my control. It, 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 you have this, this natural urge to want to keep control or, or keep too much control. Well, that can be a bad thing if you're keeping the drone too low. You may be only 100 feet away with your drone at 20 feet altitude, but there could be a row of trees or an obstruction like a building or something between you and the drone and there be an emergency. You have to hit that return to home. You don't want the drone to fly straight back to you because it would encounter and, and probably hit the obstruction or the uh, trees or whatever it is. I keep mine set at 98 feet, as you can see. So that way, um, that's going to rise above any obstruction. Again, trees, buildings, whatever. It's going to go straight up first thing, then fly back to the point of, uh, of home and then come back down to there. I know it's a little unnerving. In an emergency situation, you tap that button, you see the drone just take off straight up. But hey, it's doing its job. That's what it's supposed to do. Now you can adjust that altitude here if the obstructions are taller uh, or need to be adjusted anyway. So that is a, uh, a a good thing to be mindful of. Just just make sure that that is set appropriately. Speed mode is really an important thing if you're shooting uh, cinematic. Typically, you'll see uh, a couple, at least two modes, in regard, uh, depending on what manufacturer you're using. But uh, with the Evo, we have standard mode, which is what you would think. It's standard. It, the drone is going to fly. It's going to be good and responsive. It's going to be snappy and quick. It's going to make quick turns and y'all. But that's not what you always want when you're shooting cinema. You're wanting a smoother, slower, more controlled uh turning, more controlled movements, slower movements. You don't want necessarily abrupt stops and starts. You want things to be just smoother and, and effortless. That's where we would use precision mode. Now that's going to slow everything down. So if you make a turn, if you make a yaw, which would be like a pan, uh, elevation, like a crane, anything like that's going to be slower. And it's not going to take off like a bullet when you hit the sticks. It's going to be very take off slow, then pick up speed, whatever you're applying with the stick. And then when you let go of the stick, it's going to coast to a stop. Remember that phrase, coast to a stop. Your stopping is also going to take longer. So if you're around anything like a fence, a building, a wall, a tree, uh, anything, it's going to take longer for the drone to stop. So allow yourself some extra room there. Ludicrous. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cancel it, but ludicrous mode is, that's kind of a fun term for it. That means it's just really fast. It maxes out the drone speed. The Evo will do 42, 44 miles an hour. So it's really moving. Now, up close, that's going to be kind of disconcerting. It's, it's not going to be something you use often. In fact, overall, it's something you're probably not going to use often. But if you're flying at a higher altitude, say over treetops, maybe you're a couple hundred feet or more, and you're needing to get that sense of motion flying over something like that, ludicrous mode may be what you, you need to use. Um, now, again, we won't get into all this now as far as shooting technique, because there's going to be things to watch for, such as getting the props in the upper corners of the shots and things like that. So then we get into camera angle and how it's used with something like ludicrous mode. But just to know that it's there. Now I'm going to jump all the way down to the bottom to general. 
This lets you make a few settings that are going to be important. Um, to me, the, the units, the second thing down, do you want a metric or imperial? I'm more familiar with miles per hour, you know, feet, things like that. It just, I'm just old school, I guess. And so that just works better for me. So I leave that there. Firmware version. This is where you would go to check your firmware and see if you had updates. Um, so there are a couple things here to uh, to take a look at as well. Jump up one to the gimbal. Now you can do a few things here. Now this um, this EXP setting at the bottom, the pitch. That's how fast the gimbal rotates up and down. So you have some control there too. Jump up here and take a look at the aircraft battery. Now the battery has three cells inside. So that's what you can see the reading for each of the cells inside. The voltage, the temperature, the capacity remaining, um, how many times the battery has cycled or fully discharged, and you can set your battery warnings here. Image transmission, how strong our signal is, and that's the, the image being transmitted to our controller to let us see what the drone sees. We can control the, the sticks on the remote. And obstacle avoidance. There may be reasons that you want to enable this or disable this. In this case, the sensors on the front will stop the drone so many feet away. It's probably six or eight feet away. But if you need to get closer to, to an object, again, I'm going to pick on trees, like a tree or a wall or, or a, a small building or something like that. You may need to disable that obstacle avoidance to let you get close enough to that, um, that subject. Addy mode. So let's X out of this. Okay, so now we've, we've got some things set up there. So let's take a look at the camera. That big red button on the right uh, column is indicating that we're in video mode. The button right below it, tap that, we'll switch over. Notice the screen changed a bit and the button turned white. White button means stills. So if you're shooting stills, that's your still camera. Tap it over, the red button, the screen goes wide, we're shooting video. So that's a quick indicator between the two modes, whether you're shooting video or shooting stills. Now, just at the very bottom right corner, we see a little arrow pointing up. I'm going to tap that. Opens this bar along the bottom. This lets us make some camera settings here. I'm just going to run through these real quickly with you. Um, the movie format, we have two different formats we can choose from, MOV or MP4. Exposure, though, is kind of an important one. Auto is cool. I mean, it's auto. It makes it easy. But if you want to get more granular, you can choose manual. And notice how these other things along the bottom lit up. The shutter, the ISO, um, some of these other options opened up for us. We're going to go back to auto for a second. Adjust our EV. Now I want to talk about white balance for just a second. When you're flying in the air, and shooting a video, you're going to be moving around. So that means you may rotate um, from a shot looking more toward the sun or toward a light source. And then if you're panning or rotating or yawing the drone around, you're going to end up looking away from that light source to a darker source. If you have this on auto, it's going to be doing all kinds of legwork, trying to adjust and compensate for the changing light, and your shot's going to really look bad, for, to pick a nice word for it. It's going to be janky. It's going to be getting light and dark and jumping all over the place. So always, always, always go in here and take a look and just pick the closest setting of what you're doing, whether it's a sunny day, a cloudy day, if you're uh, under incandescent light, neon light, um, or you can do a custom setting there at the end. What that does, that will lock that setting to where it won't adjust constantly. This will be kind of the best happy medium based on the light settings that you're shooting in. So if you pan that uh, uh, camera from a lighter to darker area, it's going to be more consistent. It's not going to jump all over the place. Now, digital zoom. 
we all know the difference between digital and optical zoom, you know, with the pros and cons of both. Lots of drones don't have zoom though. Um, and there is a place for it. There may be a time that you need to zoom in on something. Maybe it's a still shot or whatever from a, a good distance. The Evo has, believe it or not, an eight times optical zoom. So you can really punch in. Now, again, it's digital. You know how that's blowing up the pixels. So there's going to be a quality issue there that you have to take into consideration. But hey, it's there if you need it. Color profiles. I always shoot in log. And if you notice that the image looks kind of washed out and flat, I'll switch over to none. Now I'm letting the uh, camera make the decision. So this would be what you would get if you're shooting in automatic mode without log or any preset profile. Now you see here in the middle we have some others like vivid, black and white, art, film. So there's some uh, built-in presets here. But log will give you the most data. It's not the prettiest image to look at here, but once you get it into your editing software, it gives you the maximum information that you need for color correction and color grading. So again, for shooting professionally or where you're going to use that in post-production, you want to shoot in log. That's going to give you the most data so you can pull out the colors, adjust the highs and lows, get it just the way you want. So, I'm going to tap here to turn off this Addy mode warning. Now, this little white bar up in the top left, what could that be? Let's tap it. That is our map. So it just hides over there when we're not using it. Tap again, tap it again to expand. So that this gets into our flight controls a bit, shows us where the drone is. This is based on GPS. And surprisingly, I'm getting a, a bit of a GPS signal indoors here, typically indoors. You're not going to get that, but I'm close to a window and a wall, so it must be doing well enough. But the arrow will give you the heading of the drone what direction it's, it's pointing toward, what the front nose of the drone is aimed at, um, give you a, uh, a, a map of where it's at. And um, we have a few options here to adjust the compass point, recenter the aircraft there. We can change the map to get a, a hybrid view or GPS view. And the flight route, if we had been flying, and again, that has to be switched on. If we'd been flying, it's going to show us a, a outline, a map, or sort of a, a line of the path the drone has been flying. So we can go back and review that later and look to see what our flight path was. And this is kind of cool. Find my drone. It eh, went away there. Now, there, it, this isn't a guaranteed thing, but what this will do is give you the, the location, the coordinates of the last transmission from your drone. So if you lose your drone, hopefully that never happens. This is going to ping you and say, hey, this is the last spot it, it sent a signal from. So at least it gives you something to go on. Hopefully, if you're in that situation, you'll go out there and boom, you'll see it sitting right there on the ground, hopefully in one piece. Now to get back to our normal view, we just tap that. The last thing I'm going to point out is I have this little guy, you see me moving around, histogram. And we're going to get into that more when uh, we do the ND filter and camera settings video. But um, let's suffice it to say that I love shooting with the histogram and I'll leave it up here. And one reason, and I'll explain this more in that video as well, when you're shooting outside, you're going to have light interference on your screen. So what you're seeing on your screen isn't necessarily going to be the gospel. It's not going to be exactly true. Even though you may have uh, those sun shields and even the ones, the big ones that fit around your face and you're, you're peering down into this little box and, and everything and you think you've got all the light blocked out, that's, that's a step in the right direction. That's good, but it's still not 100% accurate. So you want to learn to use to shoot with a histogram and get your settings right and your adjustments right with the histogram because that's not going to lie. When you get back in and uh, load your, your um, footage onto your computer and you go into post and start working with that color correction, you'll be glad you did because it's going to, the histogram is going to be giving you the truthful image 
uh, information where you can't rely necessarily on what your eyes are seeing out in the sun because again, you're getting glare in your eyes, you're getting glare off your screen. It's changing the saturation of the colors and even with really, really good um, um, monitors for this, it can still make a difference. So again, sorry for the long round on histograms, but you can tell I'm a big fan. Anyway, that's just sort of a little walkthrough. Um, again, in your downtime, just take the props off your drone, take your gimbal guard off, and power it up on your desk. And just as if you were going to go on a flight without spinning up the motors, and go through the settings here and just get a little more familiar with where things are, what they do. Um, if you see something that, that's confusing or doesn't make sense, hey, feel free to let me know. Um, my email again is terry, T-R-R-Y, at blackdogdroneops.com. I'm also a mentor here on the Andy Brigade. Book a session. We'll talk about it. We'll go through your, your settings and uh, come up with a good game plan or a good set of settings for you to use in different circumstances, whatever the case may be. Happy to help out. And thanks for watching. Stay safe. Take care in, in this little uh, uh, situation we've got going on. Well, it's not little, but you know what I mean. And uh, I hope to see everyone soon. We'll have a new video next week. And again, love having you guys here as part of the brigade. Bye.